Now DHA and EPA slowly uh, and steadily DHA and EPA absolutely important uh, lacking in uh, most of us. Uh, most of us are not eating fatty fish, unfortunately. So you know, um, extremely important for our brain. Uh, ninety percent of PUFA. So DHA is made up of ninety percent of PUFA in the brain. Okay, imagine. So your your PUFA, what you're having right now, you're not having DHA as a PUFA. What we are having is soya oil. Soya oil, corn oil, canola oil, peanut oil. Those are all high in omega six. Those are not high in DHA. Okay, so you want to make sure that you know if you want good PUFA in your brain, you better have DHA. Okay, all right. <clears throat> and look at this. How how it matters. Basically, it, it is important for attention, planning, problem solving, inhibition. So in uh, I think you know if child mother is not uh, non rich, just go ahead and offer her seafood or uh, fish. Okay, this is your uh, your neuron, right? This are the myelin sheet that I was talking about. Okay, myelin sheet, very important. It speeds up the uh, uh, connection. This is your cell membrane. Do you remember your cell, right? These are your basically your lipid layers, right? Phospholipid. Okay. Now this has to be absolutely fluid. Okay. It should not be very rigid. If you have a DHA, if you have EPA, if you have omega three, uh, you know, food in your diet, this will remain fluid. It will, you know, it will move. It will remain fluid, but if you have a diet which is high in omega six, this you know. So basically, you will have a lot more omega six over here, and it will become more rigid. It will have a lot of inflammation. It will have a lot of you know breaking of the cell membrane. Okay, uh, so uh, like it's important that the ratio is good, omega three to omega six. You know, try to keep it one is to one. So if you're not even having omega three, then avoid omega six. Okay. So this is again your DHA. Why is it important? You guys know about all this. Look at this. Of course, for brain. Okay. Okay. Now, what is the requirement of DHA? Basically, uh, three two fifty to five hundred milligram of uh, both EPA DHA per day. Minimum two hundred milligram uh, by pregnant and lactating mothers. Okay, and the optimum dietary ratio. Uh, I prefer one is to one. Two is to one is still too high for me, but one is to one ratio is good. But our current diet is typically ten is to one is to ten is to one, two sometimes twenty five is to one. And in Bengal, people have this habit of eating a lot of fried food, you know, and that fried food is made up of all the soya oil and corn oil. So please avoid fi fried food. Tell mothers if she wants to fry, she can fry it in ghee. Okay, okay. And here I mentioned about the conversion ala to DHA, just almost up to four percent. Right now, we just I read one study; they said up to ten percent, but I feel probably just not more than four to five percent. Okay. Now here again, uptake of uh, omega three by mothers. You know, so what they found that if she took uh, food which was high in uh, omega three, which is your uh, seafood, you know, those children have higher verbal IQ. Okay, children, mothers who took less amount of uh, omega three through food, those children had poor IQ. Okay, so those the, that is important. Here are some of the studies which are done. Uh, what they found that if mother took omega three uh, medicine, okay, it did not appear to improve child's neurodevelopment. So a lot of time, what happens? They said, oh, you know, mother should take omega three, or the mother should take tablet, mother, but you know, it did not really help. Uh, at five years of age. Another thing is also a lot of this formula making company. They said, "Oh, we have made a formula which is omega three, but that it did not help uh, with the IQ of children. So it's all marketing gimmick. So mother has most mother's milk has most amount of DHA, EPA, extremely important. So please recommend mother's milk. You know that's why IQ is much higher." Okay, and uh, for adult, you know, uh, they did find some difference in blood pressure and plasma triglyceride level, uh, but on cognition, they did not see much of a difference. Okay, so for adults, if they are taking, these are some of the main thing is your fatty fish is important. Those are your DHA, EPA. Choline, uh, quickly I'm going through choline. Okay, important for formation of acetylcholine. So your neurotransmitters. 
okay uh, remember i talked about those uh, cell membrane uh, you know so for cell membrane you need phosphatidylcholine of you know and this sphingomyelin is important for brain so choline is really important for your brain formation okay it is also methyl donor so it's basically it donates a methyl right and it converts homocysteine to methionine now homocysteine you don't want too much in your in your uh, body because it's it's very inflammatory okay so choline is important basically to convert your homocysteine to methionine okay and, and there are other micronutrients which are important your your uh, you know your folate and your vitamin b12 also okay again important for all your uh, you know mainly your brain right okay what happens when you don't have choline same thing look at this same thing so don't forget your choline with your folic acid okay mainly comes from food what is your rda for choline for us 425 for men 550 are we getting enough i don't think so pregnant mothers uh lactating mothers about 500 okay now you i'm sure a lot of uh, nutritionists are there and you know what is nutrigenomics right the dietary choline works as nutrigenomics okay so it's important to have it in a diet okay now this is this very beautiful study which was done by uh, mark maneri he's another guru of malnutrition and what he found he did basically studies of uh, uh, 62 i mean uh, many many children about 313 children stunted children and what he found the children who were stunted uh, basically they were not receiving amino acids choline uh, mainly choline which was important for sphingolipids and glycerophospholipids so the you know the diagram that i showed so if choline was absent you know children were absent on this also sphingomyelin and phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylethinamine so that's why they said that it's important that children get not only essential amino acid type 2 nutrients and also the choline okay so that that's why i just wanted to put this uh, choline picture this is phosphatidylcholine what it does you can see you know it, it basically helps with the lung function gut you know pretty much everything right okay what is the best source of choline look at all these nutrients which are present in your eggs look at this right how can you beat egg with anything excellent carotenoids omega-3 ad kb sex b12 even folic acid calcium everything okay type 1 type 2 vitamin c it's not there we can just put some nimbu in it okay which are the other food which are high in choline this are chicken liver soya flour salmon chicken turkey mainly non-rich uh, cauliflower if you have half a cup only 24 grams so if you have a mother who needs 500 grams of uh, milligrams of choline how is she going to get it if she's vegetarian okay think about it and i think you should also do your dietary recall and see if you got choline or not especially if you're planning to become pregnant okay uh, if you eradicate three most prevalent micronutrient your world iq will be increased by 10 points which are which are those iron zinc and iodine okay two of them are type one this is type two okay iron again we know nature's uh, iron is important one thing i want to tell you about iron that if iron is absent in children uh, say when they're growing in first year of life uh, especially after four months of age, the children have uh, cognition and they have impaired cognition and that's permanent. So if, if, so once you diagnose child with anemia, that means a permanent damage has already been occurred. After that, if you give any iron, whatever damage is done is done. Okay, so main thing is your prevention. So please prevent uh, children from getting anemia. In US, what we do is, uh, you know, we check the children at around nine months of age. And before we check them, we already start them on iron supplements. That's the protocol in India, I mean, in the US. Okay. But we don't want to give too much iron also in this children. Better to get it from food because what happens is, uh, you know, extra iron will affect, uh, you know, it's it acts like a free radical, right? And then it can cause problems. It can also affect your gut microbiome. Okay, so it's important that we don't, uh, you know, just indiscriminately keep giving iron without understanding it is like a, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. Okay, so you don't want to go do too much. 
these are food and iron if child is non rich please give them liver very high amount of iron they'll get they'll get all the nutrients if they are vegetarian uh, give them egg don't give them too much of milk because milk dairy is very poor in iron okay so i don't like it i like the sholi is really good so all your pulses are good okay make sure that they get it with vitamin c welcome to this spoken tutorial on the importance of choline in this tutorial we will learn about primary functions of choline causes and symptoms of its deficiency requirements for different age groups choline is an essential nutrient it is required for vital functions in the body and for overall health vital functions like maintaining the cell structure and functioning of cells choline helps in carrying the nerve impulses from neuron to neuron it also helps in carrying impulses from neurons to organs choline plays a role in normal functioning of the liver transportation of fat and cholesterol also requires choline it is involved in muscle control memory and circadian rhythm circadian rhythm is a process that regulates our sleep and waking up cycle choline is required during fetal development it is required for brain and nervous system development of the baby it influences the closure of the neural tube neural tube in the embryo forms the brain and spinal cord there are various factors that can cause increase in the deficiency the metabolism of choline folate vitamin b12 and methionine are interrelated if availability of one nutrient is disturbed other nutrients are also affected inadequate dietary intake of folate and vitamin b12 causes choline depletion apart from these having a poor diet can cause choline deficiency during pregnancy and lactation the requirement of choline increases if these requirements are not met then deficiency occurs this can cause neural tube defects and stunting in children neural tube defects are birth defects that affect the nervous system and spine it also affects the brain development intelligence and motor development also get affected deficiency in growing children leads to poor memory they will also have difficulty in learning in adults choline deficiency can cause damage to the muscle and liver due to choline deficiency fat does not move out of the liver this leads to fat accumulation causing non alcoholic fatty liver disease choline deficiency can also lead to alzheimer's disease in alzheimer's disease memory and thinking skills are diminished adequate intake of choline varies for different age groups for 0 to 13 month old infants it is 125 to 150 mg per day for 1 to 8 years old children it is 200 to 250 mg per day 9 to 13 years old require 375 mg per day 14 to 18 years old need 400 to 550 mg per day adult men require 550 mg per day adult women and pregnant women require 450 mg per day 
Lactating women require 550 mg per day. Our body does not produce sufficient amounts of choline. Hence, it has to be taken through food. Let us look at the food sources of choline. Eggs, chicken liver, fish, wheat germ, nuts, seeds and legumes are good sources. Let's look at the amount of choline present in a few food items. One egg has around 147 milligrams. 100 grams of chicken liver has approximately 190 milligrams. 100 grams of salmon has nearly 79 milligrams. 30 grams of raw split black gram has around 62 milligrams. 100 grams of cauliflower has 127 milligrams. 30 grams of soya bean has 36 milligrams. Include this choline rich food in your daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on choline rich vegetarian recipes. In this tutorial, we will learn importance of choline, preparation of some Choline rich vegetarian recipes. Choline helps in maintaining the cell structure and functioning of the cells. Its derivatives help in carrying nerve impulses. These impulses can be from neuron to neuron or from neuron to an organ. Normal functioning of the liver also requires choline. The importance of choline has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for this tutorial. Now, let us see the preparation of our first recipe, Green Gram Sprouts Idli. To make this recipe, you will need 1 fourth cup green gram sprouts, 1 tablespoon split black gram, 1 fourth cup grated carrot, 1 teaspoon fenugreek seeds, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, salt to taste, 1 teaspoon oil. Procedure We will first start with sprouting green gram. Soak 2 tablespoons of green gram overnight or for 8 hours. Wash and drain it in the morning. Then tie it in a muslin cloth and keep it in a warm place to germinate. In winter, it takes more than a day to sprout. Notice when the sprouts appear. Then soak the split black gram and fenugreek seeds together overnight. Drain them the next day. Grind them along with green gram sprouts into a smooth batter. For grinding, you can use a stone grinder or a mixer. Transfer the batter into a bowl. Cover the bowl with a lid and leave it to ferment for 6 to 8 hours. Once the batter is fermented, add cumin seeds, salt and grated carrot and mix well. Next, grease the idli mold and pour the batter into it. Steam it in a steamer for 10 to 12 minutes. Green gram sprouts idli is ready. 4 idlis have approximately 302 mg of choline. You can also use Bengal gram sprouts to make this recipe. Our next recipe is cauliflower pulao. To make this recipe, you will need 100 grams of washed grated cauliflower, half teaspoon coriander powder, 1 teaspoon roasted sunflower seeds, 1 teaspoon roasted sesame seeds, 2 green chilies, 1 teaspoon pepper powder. The other ingredients required are 1 teaspoon mustard seeds, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, pinch of turmeric powder, handful of washed and chopped coriander leaves, salt to taste, 1 teaspoon oil or ghee. Procedure 
heat oil or ghee in a pan and add green chilies, mustard seeds and cumin seeds. Once they splutter, add the grated cauliflower and mix well. To this add salt, turmeric powder, pepper powder and coriander powder. Mix well again. Cover the pan with a lid and cook until cauliflower softens. Next, add roasted sesame seeds and sunflower seeds. In the end, garnish with coriander leaves. Cauliflower pulao is ready. One bowl of cauliflower pulao has around 229 milligrams of choline. Our third recipe is beetroot and coconut chutney. To make this recipe, you will need half cup washed and grated beetroot. 1 tablespoon grated coconut A handful of washed and chopped coriander leaves 4 to 5 cloves of garlic 2 green chilies 1 red chilli You will also need 1 teaspoon mustard seeds 1 teaspoon cumin seeds 1 teaspoon split black gram 4 to 5 curry leaves Salt to taste 1 teaspoon of oil Procedure, we will first steam the beetroot. Place the grated beetroot on a steaming plate and steam for 8 to 10 minutes. Once steamed, keep it aside to cool. After the steamed beetroot cools down, we can make the chutney. Put beetroot, coconut, garlic, coriander, green chilies into a mixer jar. Add 1 tablespoon of water and salt and grind it into a smooth paste. Transfer the beetroot coconut paste into a bowl and keep this aside. We will now make the tempering for the chutney. Heat oil in a pan. Add split black gram, curry leaves, red chilli, mustard and cumin seeds. After the seeds crackle, add the tempering to the paste and mix well. Beetroot and coconut chutney is ready. Half cup of this chutney has around 244 milligrams of choline. Our last recipe is lentil curry. To make this recipe, you will need 1.5 tablespoons mott beans, 1 tablespoon split red gram, 1 tablespoon black gram, 1 teaspoon fenugreek sprouts, 4 to 5 pieces of bottle gourd, 3 to 4 cauliflower florets, 1 medium chopped tomato, 1 medium chopped onion. For the masala paste, you will need 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, 1 teaspoon black pepper seeds, 2 green chilies, 3 cloves of garlic, 1 stick of cinnamon, 5 cloves. You will also need half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon red chilli powder, a handful of washed and chopped coriander leaves, one teaspoon lemon juice, one teaspoon oil or ghee, salt to taste. Procedure: Wash and soak mott beans, red gram and black gram for six to eight hours. Then add these pulses, fenugreek sprouts and vegetables to the cooker. To this, add spices, salt and water and pressure cook for 3 whistles. Simultaneously, grind all the ingredients mentioned under masala to a paste. After the pressure is released from the cooker, mash the pulses and vegetables. Next, heat oil in a pan and saute the onions till they turn light brown. Add tomatoes to it and cook until they turn soft. To this add the masala paste and cook until the raw smell is gone. Put the mashed pulses and vegetables and cook for 5 to 10 minutes. Lastly, add lemon juice. Transfer the curry into a bowl and garnish with coriander leaves. Lentil curry is ready. One bowl of this curry has around 400 and 39 milligrams of choline. Include these choline rich recipes in your daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining.
Welcome to the spoken tutorial on choline rich non vegetarian recipes. In this tutorial, we will learn non vegetarian recipes rich in choline. Choline is an essential nutrient required for overall health. It is also required for normal functioning of the liver. Transportation of fat and cholesterol also requires choline. The importance of choline has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for this tutorial. We will begin with our first recipe, egg noodles. To make this recipe, you will need 2 eggs, half medium chopped onion, half medium chopped tomato, half teaspoon red chili powder, a pinch of turmeric powder. You will also need half teaspoon cumin seeds, handful of washed and chopped coriander leaves, salt to taste, two teaspoons of oil or ghee. Procedure Crack eggs in a bowl. Add salt and red chili powder. Then whisk the eggs well. Heat oil in a pan and pour the eggs on the pan. On medium flame, cook the omelette on both sides until done. Keep this aside to cool. Once cooled, cut the omelette into thin, long pieces. Next, heat oil in a pan and add cumin seeds. Once the cumin seeds splutter, add onion. Saute the onion till it turns golden brown in color. Add tomato, turmeric powder and salt. Mix well and cook till the tomato turns soft. To this add the thin long pieces of the omelette. Mix well again and cook again for 5 minutes. Garnish with coriander leaves. Egg noodles are ready. One bowl of egg noodles has around 290 mg of choline. Our next recipe is chicken liver curry. To make this recipe, you will need 50 g of washed chicken liver, 1 medium chopped onion, 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste, handful of washed and chopped coriander leaves. Handful of washed mint leaves. Two green chilies. You will also need one teaspoon turmeric powder. One teaspoon cumin seeds. Juice of half lemon. Salt to taste. Two teaspoons oil. Procedure. Apply ginger garlic paste and half teaspoon turmeric powder to chicken liver. Leave this for 30 minutes. Grind the coriander leaves, mint leaves and green chilies into a paste. Keep this aside for later use. Heat oil in a pan. Add cumin seeds and let it splutter. Add the onion and saute until it turns golden brown in color. To this add the paste that we made earlier. Now add the chicken liver. Add turmeric powder and salt. Mix it well and add half a glass of water. Close the pan with a lid and cook for 10 minutes or until the liver is cooked. Squeeze juice of half lemon and serve. Chicken liver curry is ready. Half bowl of chicken liver curry has 251 mg of choline. Our third recipe is Prawns Masala Curry. To make this, you will need 50 g prawns, 1 medium chopped onion, puree of 1 medium sized tomato, 1 fourth cup curd, 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste. You will also need 
वन टी स्पून रेड चिली पाउडर हाफ टी स्पून टर्मरिक पाउडर वन टी स्पून लेमन जूस वन टी स्पून गरम मसाला पाउडर वन टी स्पून क्यूमिन सीड्स सॉल्ट टू टेस्ट टू टी स्पून ऑयल प्रोसीजर टू मेक द करी क्लीन एंड वॉश द प्रॉन्स मेक अ स्लिट ऑन द बैक साइड ऑफ द प्रॉन्स पुल आउट द ब्लैक थ्रेड फ्रॉम इट दिस ब्लैक थ्रेड हैज टू बी रिमूव फ्रॉम द अदर साइड ऑल्सो इफ फाउंड apply lemon juice ginger garlic paste and salt to the prawns leave it for 30 minutes grind the tomato to make a puree next heat oil in a pan and add cumin seeds once the seeds splutter add chopped onions saute the onions till they turn light brown in color Now add the tomato puree to this and cook for 5 minutes. Add spices, salt, prawns and curd. Make sure to keep the heat low while adding curd. Mix well and add half a glass of water. Cover the pan and cook on low flame for 10 minutes or until the prawns are cooked. Prawns masala is ready. Half bowl of prawns masala curry has around 379 mg of choline. Our last recipe is fish curry. To make this recipe, you will need 100 g of washed rohu, 1 medium chopped tomato, 2 teaspoons mustard seeds, 1 teaspoon coriander seeds. 1 teaspoon nigella seeds 1 small piece of ginger you will also need 2 green chilies 1/2 teaspoon cumin seeds 1 teaspoon red chili powder 1/2 teaspoon turmeric powder handful of washed and chopped coriander leaves salt to taste 2 teaspoons oil procedure Apply salt and turmeric powder to the fish. Keep it aside for 30 minutes. Grind the mustard seeds into a paste by adding little water. Keep this aside for later use. Grind cumin seeds, coriander seeds and ginger into a smooth paste. Dilute the paste with 3 tablespoons of water. We will use this paste later. Heat oil in a pan and add nigella seeds. Once the seeds splutter, add the fish to the pan. For 5 minutes, fry the fish on both sides. Then add the diluted seeds paste to it. Add the tomatoes, spices and green chili. Mix them well and add salt. along with half a glass of water mix again and cook this until tomatoes turn soft now add mustard paste and coriander leaves close the pan with a lid and cook for 5 minutes fish curry is ready one bowl of fish curry has around 819 mg of choline Include these choline rich recipes in your daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining.